Butch Mordick, been the owner of Mrs. Mike's for 47 years. He started my 48th one in uh, May. A year ago about now, uh, a year ago in January, we had the government mandate against us. We had to change our cooking oils, get rid of the trans fats in the oil. So it drastically changed the flavor of our chips, which we've had for lots of years. The last six years, we had record sales every year. It just kept going up, getting better all the time. And uh, the popcorn has helped that too. But then all of a sudden with this mandate to change, we took a big hit. We were considering maybe not being around. It, uh, if, if business would have kept dropping the way it was, uh, we might not have been around a couple more years. We finally <clears throat> have come up with uh, a flavor now that we feel is 99% of what it used to be. The company that makes the shortening made the old stuff and makes what we're getting now too. Uh, they told us that we should switch to this other oil they had at the time and that stuff was completely terrible. <laughs> so then we started experimenting on our own and now uh, the company, and I don't know if they had this stuff before, but now all of a sudden they got something that works. And so it's been a, it's really been a great. Back in the Depression days, uh, there actually was two different potato chips in Freeport. There was Keep Crisp and there was an Always Fresh. And uh, one of them was owned by uh, Mr. Lotz. And people always talk about him. He used to deliver chips in a big uh, Turing Packard, I think it was. He always had a, a bulldog sitting in the front seat with him. And then uh, the other guy was Mr. Noy, Mike Noy. And then he eventually bought out Mr. Lotz. And that's when he changed the name to Mrs. Mike's. Really didn't know anything about it. And I, I was at micro switch at the time and I, I had 10 years in there and uh, I just got, uh, it was a recession hit in, in 70, 71. And uh, I got bumped around back to night shift and everything. And I thought, man, I, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> so this was for sale and I borrowed some money to, to do it, not knowing what I was doing. And in the first year, I thought I made a mistake. I did just, I kept, you know, I worked hard at it. And Are you overwhelmed by the response? Yeah, it was rough this, this year, though. Uh, when we made the change, when we, when we had to do it, uh, and the product was bad. But boy, people can be brutal. Yeah, my two sons now are going to take it over. And, and, uh, uh, I, I'm actually retired, but I got to have something to do too. I can't just sit around. So it's just amazing that you can, you know, like I said, you go from this high of the record sales. And then all of a sudden, there's nothing, you know, and it's, it makes a big difference. Well, yesterday, I think we had the busiest day we've had for a year, over a year. Well, I, I'm proud of it, you know, very proud. And uh, uh, some kind of a legacy, I guess, you know. It's been good to me. It's been a, made a good living at it, but, you know, and I still say today, I mean, people don't realize there's still opportunities to have a good business, and, but you got to work. You got to work. One of the things I've always been kind of proud of is that different Frito-Lay people have said through the years how they wanted to put us out of business and stuff. 
and I so I take a little pride in the fact that I'm a thorn in the butt of free to lay, you know. <laughs> and the small businesses, you know, they are. If you're successful in a small business, a lot of times you'll be a thorn in somebody's side, you know. They they want to get rid of you, but it's uh, that's not going to happen. So. Don't give up on us. We're always here. Come buy our chips. <laughs>